Hello and welcome to another AIC video. I had these two systems show up today. Uh, I bought these off of a guy on Reddit who posted on there that he was looking to get rid of these and I figured why not make some videos out of them. Uh, he wasn't asking for too much for them. I felt the price was pretty reasonable. Uh, so I went ahead and paid them um, for the two systems and paid to ship them to me and got them and they showed up in there in pretty nice condition. What these are are IBM era T30s. So let's go ahead and open this one up. So this is the first one that I opened. Let me adjust the camera. Well, I'll adjust the laptop. And they have Pentium 4 mobile chips in them. Pretty hot running chips, but they're pretty chunky boys to deal with the heat. This one has some light surface, I don't want to say scratches, but you know, it's dirty it probably will clean up on the screen this one though on the right looks brand new there is a scratch on the screen but it's not broken or cracked or anything but do you see those patterns i'm thinking this was like a brand new laptop that stayed in the package for a long time before it was opened and shipped to me and the reason why i say that is you see those these squares here they look exactly like my x 31, which was a brand new in box, which also has those exact same shapes from the warning uh, label that was on the plastic bag that was on here. And it like imprinted that onto the cover of the screen. It was like, you know, don't suffocate with the bag or whatever, printed in a bunch of different languages. And so this, which was brand new in box, is the same pattern that this has it. So, um, I thought that was pretty funny. So I'm guessing this was like a uh, nearly unused laptop. Now, unfortunately, these are anything but perfect. So even though it looks like it might be a brand new computer, and we can open it up here, take a look. It has a scratch here in the upper right corner, or excuse me, upper left corner of the screen. But again, that's not broken or anything. It's just a scratch in the plastic. The keyboard looks nearly untouched. A little dusty though. Uh, like the labels don't even look like they have, like they usually get wear from people's wrists on them. They don't even look worn at all. So they look, if they were used, very lightly used. But we have a couple problems. One, we're missing like a screw cover here. If we flip it over. We're missing a screw here and a screw here. And this is the bay for the hard drive and they have no storage at all. So I'll have to add some sort of storage to them. I have some, oh, as I bump the camera, I have some options. I have like this guy, 32 gig. Uh, I think this is 32 gigs as well. Now, these are only 16 gig and I don't think that's enough for Windows XP if I wanted to use these. So I may have to go with one of those two options. The other problem is on this one, I actually don't have it on because I'll need to glue this. The uh, hard drive bay where the screw actually clamps down it got broken off. It usually happens from people over tightening them so I'm gonna have to glue that back together which is a bit annoying. Now it does seem like, I'm gonna let me adjust things here real quick, that they do have batteries and the batteries do seem to at least take a charge and the first time I went to power them on Get in that hole there. Comes up, takes a minute. This is probably have we have a supervisor password on the bios unfortunately so we are going to need to reset that now for a lot of thinkpads this is kind of a death note because you can't reset it as an end user very easily you have to have special hardware which very quickly exceeds the cost of the of buying one that it doesn't have a bios password and so if normally, I would say if you have a laptop with a BIOS password lock like this, I would sell it or get rid of it or make the um, seller buy it back or whatever. 
Um, it, it isn't worth the headache. However, I was really disappointed and I was really sad that these had a BIOS lock on them. I couldn't do much with them. So I went online and I did a bunch of research and I found a really old web page that I'm going to take the instructions off of and post it on my own site just so that I have them somewhere else in case the other site, because a lot of the links on that site were broken. Um, it's from more than 10 years ago. And so, um, so I'll link that to my website down below. I'll, I'll put both links, one to my website and one to the original. That way if the original ever goes away, my website will stay up. Or if my website ever goes down, the other might stay up. Anyways, good to have multiple sources of information. But on this, you can actually jump the EEPROM, and I'll show you that here in a minute, uh, to be able to get into the BIOS and then reset the password. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut this down and we're going to walk through that process uh, because I had some questions that weren't answered and I had some trial and error at figuring out what was the correct uh, place to jump and stuff. So let me go ahead and go to flip the laptop over, go open it up. So we'll be right back in just a second. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do, and I'll do it off camera, uh, just so it's easier for me to get it plugged back in, is we're going to unplug the CMOS battery, wait for, I'm going to wait for 30 seconds, and then put the CMOS battery back in. Then right here is the EEPROM, which fortunately on these is really easy to access being that it's under one of the RAM slots. Some of the other systems, you have to disassemble the laptop almost entirely to get to this chip. And when it says to jump the pins, the ones that you're going to jump are these ones right here, these last two. Uh, it's pins, I believe, three and four. So one, two, three, four, and then on the other side, five, six, seven, eight. Now I've already tried this. Oh, I'm not showing it on camera, sorry. Is this chip right here, and you're gonna pit, jump these two pins right here, uh, three and four. So it's one, two, three, four, and then on this side, one, five, six, seven, eight. And it's pins three, and four, we're going to jump. Now I've chosen to use a pair of pliers to do so, uh, just because I found it to be easy. And we'll let me readjust and plug back in and we will go through the process. Now, unfortunately I can't show you exactly where I'm uh, jumping the pins at the same time as a screen, because my camera can't wrap around a flat plane. Uh, but that's why I showed you where the pins were before. So when I'm jumping the pins, reference the previous section of the video where we are doing that. So I'm going to get per, uh, prepared by getting my um, pliers close, but we're not going to jump it just yet. We're going to power it on. And as soon as we see the IBM logo, we're going to jump our, our yeah. All right, now we're going to jump those two wires. I think I have it. It's kind of hard to see right on my camera. All right, I'm going to have one to get into BIOS. And this will take a while. And we might have to hit F1 one more time. Hope I have it jumped correctly. It looks like it to me. Sorry, it's really hard to do this around a camera. Okay, invalid remote change, yeah. All right, so before it gave us an asset for a password. Now it didn't to get in BIOS, which is great. This is exactly where we want to be. So what we're going to do actually at this point is unjump that connection. And we come down here to where it says password and hit enter. And yes, I know we're doing this on the side. And it says uh, supervisor password enabled. So on from this screen, now if you go into the screen while it's still jumpered, it will say disabled here. We want it to say enabled. So you have to unjumper it. Then we have to go ahead and jumper it again. And then we go down. Oh. I didn't do that right. Okay. See, it's a bit finicky. So I've unjumpered it. Are you gonna? There we go. 
You gotta let me do what I need to do. Let me go up. Yeah, let me go back a step. If they'll let me. You're not gonna play nice, are you? Jumper it again. It's gonna let me do anything. Okay, now it's disabled, but it's not letting me do anything. So let me reboot the computer and let's try that again. It really is very finicky when you're doing this. So you don't expect to have to do it a couple of times to get it done right. So let me get back to this point again. All right, so we're gonna try this again with the camera rolling. <laughs> it's very picky with how you do the steps. So we'll go ahead and turn on the computer, jump the pins. And then head up one to get to the BIOS. Okay. So we're now in BIOS. We're going to release the pin. We're going to go down to password. Or not the pin, the jump. Go to password. Go down. And before we hit enter, we re jump for it. Okay. Sorry, I have to. Uh... Okay. And then we hit. Enter. Now from here we unjumper it. That's the important thing I don't think I was doing before was unjumpering. And we hit enter, 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 and then we hit F10. And now we see if we don't require. So I think I was holding the jumper while it was when I was hitting enter, and we needed to unjumper during that portion of it. We'll see. And we're in, in like Flynn. So you jumper it to get into the BIOS. You unjumper it. You go down to password. You jumper it again. Go to supervisor password to enter and then unjumper it. Wait, yeah. And then you hit enter, enter, enter. Then you uh, F10 reboot and you should be good to go. So that took me a few tries. Um, it's not hard. You just have to be perfect in when you are doing the jumper thing uh, on pins three and four. But we were able to clear out the BIOS password. We are able to now use this system. If you'd like to see me do anything with this, let me know. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna put them on my shelf. I'm gonna re-glue the one door so it can be put back together. And we'll see if I can find some screws to reassemble the system. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Hopefully this is helpful to somebody down the line. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.